have always done nothing but go up. I really, really appreciate your show and everything that you're doing. May God bless you. Your personal economy. You can't say, I don't want any risk. I don't want to take any risk. I just want to put my money in a CD and forget about it. But I want to earn 18% a year. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Conservative talk radio you can count on. Once again, Steve Forbes. Hey, Steve, how are you? Dan, good to be with you. Financial Issues with Dan Celia. Hi, Dan. I just want you to know how much I really appreciate the passion that you have. Aligning reality with truth. And I've got Congresswoman Bachman with us right now. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank your listeners. We need to save America and keep it intact for our children and grandchildren. Now, here's your host, Dan Celia. So consumer, consumer sentiment numbers are in, and uh, they are down. They declined to 71.3 from 72.9. So they did decline. And remember I said earlier in the first hour, I was, I was curious about these numbers. I was kind of wondering what they come in because, frankly, I've been very baffled by the numbers for the last three months. I mean, I've just, I just think, frankly, the numbers have been totally out of whack because the numbers don't really line up with what is happening by way of consumer spending and, and the economy. So, you know, to me, it was it, it was kind of surprising that they were as positive as they were. And by the way, 71.3, which is what they are now, in my opinion, is not considered negative. I mean, it's it's a decent number. I mean, it's not 80, 82, but it's, you know, I mean, it's not in the 40s either. So, I mean, it's it's a decent, you know, it's a decent number. And uh, but nevertheless, it. I, I I don't want to say I, I don't want to say I'm glad the numbers down to sound like you know I'm glad things are negative. I mean it's like I said it's not that big it's not that big of a deal. It's not a lot. I'm just glad that um, there's no there's not this irrational enthusiasm which just doesn't line up with me. It doesn't make sense. A, a give you an example of irrational enthusiasm. Uh, the Wall Street Journal has a poll today that says 60 percent of the American people approve of President Obama's j- the job President Obama's doing, approves of it. Now, first of all, I don't know what the job is they're talking about that he's doing other than he looks good as a president, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know that it's dissecting exactly what he has done as far as policies, executive orders, so on and so forth. But but that's not the interesting part. So that's okay, 60%. Who knows why people, you know, it might have been framed in such a way, do you like the president? You know, and and people said, yeah. I mean, if somebody were to ask me if I like the president personally, I mean, I don't know him personally. I can judge him a little bit by his fruit and what I've seen, but at the same time. Um, but here's the interesting part. Only 35% of the American people are happy with the direction that the country is going in. I mean, does that make sense? So 60% of the people approve of the job, yet the vast majority of people disapprove of the direction that the company's going in. I don't understand how people can have a disconnect because the president of a company, the CEO of a company, sets the tone and the direction in which the company is going. It's the way it's always been, and frankly, it's the way it's always going to be. It's very seldom do you see a collapse of a, uh, and I've seen it many, many times from a consulting standpoint. I've seen the collapse of ministries. I've seen the collapse of uh, small businesses, large businesses, mid-sized companies. I have witnessed firsthand, have consulted in and around those kinds of things. And I can tell you that the collapse and the reason can generally, when I say generally, I'm going to say 98% of the time, trickle up to the overall uh, positions, ideology, strategies that were made and that come from the top. So I don't understand the disconnect. It's, it's baffling to me, this disconnect by the American people. That you can say you just, 
despise pretty much the direction the company's go, the country's going in. Well, listen, can we blame it all on Obama? No. There's a lot of factors, but but he's the leader of the nation. You know, like it or not, he's the leader of the nation. And he ought to be uh, putting forth policies, strategies, and ideologies to change the direction of the country. And maybe he has put together things that have changed the direction, but the majority of the people don't like the direction. Yet the majority of the people voted for the president, just like the majority of the people approve of his of the job that he's doing. I mean, I, I don't know. It's a total disconnect to me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I'm, you know, I'm going to need a, a psychologist to uh, figure it out for me. Hey, listen, we've got uh, on Monday, I, wanna, I just want to remind all of you because I want you to listen. So Monday, Betsy McCoy. Now, you may have seen Dr. Betsy McCoy on Fox News. She's been on Fox News a lot this week. She's got a um, new new book out called Surviving Obamacare, and I read it. It is great. It is like a handbook that every American has to have. And I've never promoted a book or an author. You know me. I don't have any. I, I very seldom have a lot of guests. I don't have a lot of authors, for sure. But she's coming on Monday, and I'm going to talk to her. You may have seen her on Fox News. And I thought, well, she's been all over the news. But you know what? No, you know, they give her like two minutes. We're going to talk to her. We're going to talk to her for 25 minutes or so. I mean, we're going to we're going to spend some time. We're going to we're going to get to get to some things that you absolutely must, without a doubt, know that you have to know about Obamacare. Things that I can't speak on. Uh, she has actually gone through uh, the twenty eight hundred pages, uh, page by page by page and uh, has gone gone through all of it. And has written a great book. It is it is a book. It's not a big, thick book. Uh, it's a small book. It's easy to read. Uh, it, it'll help you in an enormous way. But anyway, she's going to be on the program. She's going to be on the program uh, on Monday. So I want you to stay tuned. Make sure you listen to that. Let me go to Sheila. Sheila calling us from West Tennessee. Hey, Sheila. Good morning, Dan. Thank you for taking my call. I listen to you as often as I can, and I really appreciate your show. Thank you. Uh, bottom line is, I have 60000 uh, in an IRA CD in the bank, and I talked to the banker yesterday, and all he really advised me was Franklin Templeton, but they have a front-end load of 4.35% uh, that they charge you up front. I, I just don't feel like I have enough. You know, if I live another 15 years, sixty k is not going to take me very far. Also, I owe forty thousand on my house. I was wondering about taking ten thousand a year and start paying it off. And then also, I'm concerned about drawing Social Security. I'd like to wait three more years, but I'm concerned about them raising the age limit. Well, well, some great stuff, Sheila. Um, he, here's what I'll tell you about. First of all, forget the mutual fund. You don't want to do that. Um, so I just can answer that real quick. Um, you don't want to take a, a four and a half, four point three percent hit, uh, just for the privilege of putting your money in there. Uh, you don't want to do that. I'm not, uh, I, I, and it's not a bad fund. I'm not saying necessarily it's a bad fund, uh, but I don't like the strategy and the objective of the fund, uh, at this time in our global economy. So I would, I would not do that. That's out of the question. So don't even consider it. Uh, as far as the, uh, the house being, uh, paid, paid for, uh, do you have other emergency savings other than this IRA money? Money, Sheila? No, I, I work two part-time jobs. I, I make a little under twenty thousand a year. I could take the ten, and it would still keep me in the fifteen percent tax bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just concerned about the balloon at the end of, of four years refinancing it. And if I take this, like I would like to invest in Zion Oil or Chick Fil A or Hobby Lobby or Jenny mm -hmm. May Fund or some of those. But if I risk something and lose it, if I don't start paying down the house, I'm concerned that when I reach retirement or later years, I would still be paying on the house. Well, you said you said something interesting that I that I didn't get the first time that um, that you've got to refinance if you don't get it paid off because it's a it's a balloon payment in in a few years. Four four years, yes. Four years, yeah. Um, I, I just uh, here's the problem I have. I don't mind you taking maybe ten thousand dollars and putting it towards the house, um, and and keep working at trying to pay it down. I, I here's the thing that 
I'm concerned about with the $60,000. It is really, and technically, it's your emergency savings, and it's going to be your emergency savings through your retirement until the Lord calls you home. It's going to be your emergency savings. And what I don't want to happen is I don't want it to go away. I want you to be able to have it in case of a true emergency. So I, I, um, what I would rather see you do, if, if you want to put 10000 towards it, get it to thirty, and then work hard as long as you are working these part-time jobs to get it paid off. Uh, you know, put everything you can to it. I, I like that strategy better than taking 10000 every year for the next four years because what I don't want to see is your emergency savings being $20,000 because I'm suspecting that between now and the time you're, I'll just say, 80, you're going to have a number of different emergencies. And I don't mean kinds of health things. I mean uh, things like, normal stuff you know the the uh your your furnace blowing up your transmission going you know whatever the situation i mean there's always going to be something that you're going to have to uh, lay out money for and i don't i don't want you to have to get into debt using a credit card in order to take care of that emergency so um that's that's the problem that i have with it uh with with doing the 10,000 a year the other thing i would say to you is and I may be wrong on this. The government can do whatever they want. We know that. I don't think that you should be in fear of them raising, <coughs> excuse me, the retirement rate. I think they will. I think they have to do something. But I don't think it's going to be uh, on those people that are either ready to collect or are collecting. I don't think there's going to be an issue with that. I think they're going to have to go back. Uh, maybe they'll go back to people over 58 or uh, the two plans that have been put forth in the last four years have both been uh, 55, uh, uh, the, the Bowl Simpson plan and the Paul Ryan plan, uh, you know, because that just makes the most sense. Give people a chance to prepare in their last 10 years or so of working. So I don't think you have to worry about that. I wouldn't be uh, too concerned about it. And I certainly, I don't think I would be planning in and around that scenario. I think you'll be okay. I hope I'm right on that. I could be wrong. But I, I think that you'll, you'll probably be okay. So I, having said that, it may be beneficial for you to hold off as long as you can uh, to collect Social Security if you can. But if you can't, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, do it, particularly if you're healthy. Okay, Th thanks for that, though. Uh, great stuff. Let me go to uh, Rick in Columbus, Ohio. By the way, 888-589-8840. Hey, Rick. How you doing today? Good. Uh, we've got uh, some money in, in a um, management house that's uh, it's a mutual fund house, and we've been with them probably 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so what we have uh, is based on what we've done with them over the 30 years. And so last summer when we, you were talking about pulling out, you know, 60%, mm -hmm. uh, we did that. And mm -hmm. actually we have two accounts, my wife's and mine, and so I left 100% of mine in, and we did hers on the 60-40 split, right. which right. leaves us about 22% in the market. Okay. Okay, and we're coming up this month or early next month on our, you know, every semi-annual review. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm curious as to, you know, do you still think and hold that 60-40 split, which means we'd really need to take some more of my wife's money. And, and we both, uh, I have mine through a 457 account, and she was a 403B. Mm -hmm. And then after we retired, we were able to roll them, but we, you know, we rolled them kind of in a like scenario. Are you, are, do you draw anything out or will yeah. you be in the near future? We are each taking about $500 a month. Okay, gotcha. And then on top, and then add that, that's added to our pension. Okay, gotcha. Um, here, I mean, t from my point of view, I would stick to that. I mean, you, you got, I don't know how much, uh, you have 
total to come up with a percentage, but you have uh, a percentage of your overall pot of money, we'll call it, um, you know, beating inflation, I'll say. Hopefully, maybe it's even uh, beating, or at least last year, beat more than you drew out, even if it's by one or two percent. But I, you know, I I would be okay. Now I've I've changed my asset allocation models on my website, and I have decreased the amount for two thousand for at least right now anyway to be in cash. I have decreased it some. So I wouldn't have any problem with you going to 45 or 50% in cash, but I wouldn't want you to get to the place where you're putting a considerable amount back into the market. And, and the main reason for that is you're, you're in a very, uh, you're, you know, you're in a situation where that when it takes a dip, you're likely still going to have to continue to draw that $500 a month. And you, so you take a bad situation and it makes it worse, you know, because now you're selling, basically selling off shares. If you're in the market, you're selling off shares of whatever you're in uh, at, at low prices. And that's not a good thing. And it really eats at the portfolio. And it will get to a point where it's going to take, you know, 10 to 12, 15 years to recover, if at all, because it's very difficult to recover as you're making a draw. And the beauty of having cash for you is you're drawing that money out of the cash. If the market dips, and it will, if the market dips, the money that is in the market, you, you can just let it sit and let it recover. Or you can you know move it around to something that might recover a little quicker, a different strategy. But you can let it recover on its own because the money you're drawing is still coming out of the cash. It's not coming. You're not forced. You're not in a position to force to be, to sell shares of something that's in the tank. So, um, I, w I wouldn't change a whole lot. I mean, I would, I I'm okay. Like I said, with increasing your market exposure a little bit, uh, I, I would be okay with that, but I, I wouldn't want to see a change a whole lot. And I would want you to, uh, if you haven't already, have some things in your portfolio, in your market side of things that 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 forty percent or so that you would have in the market that are drawing some income. Maybe a couple good utility stocks. Uh, forget about the value of the utility stocks; may fluctuate a little bit, but uh, maybe some some good good solid companies and actually and, and actually take the dividend. Don't reinvest it. Take it by way of cash. Have them send you the check. Decrease, you know, whatever that uh, ends up being. Decrease the amount that you withdraw out every month uh, to adjust that downward uh, because of the the dividends that you're receiving on a on a quarterly basis or whatever. So I think just kind of rework the strategy a little bit, but. Uh, you know, I, I like what you did. And uh, did you miss out on some market gains? Sure you did. But you know what? The, the goal was to protect on the downside. And you did that. And that was wise. Um, and we're going to have another downside. So I, I say uh, just try to take those points and rework things uh, just a little bit. And I think that'll work out real well for you. 888-589-8840. Let's go to break. 888-589-8840. Forty. You're listening to AFR Talk Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. Uh, all the major indices uh, right now are still about flat. I mean, there's no movement in the market at all. The Dow's up seven, Nasdaq's down five, S and P's down one. So uh, just not a lot of movement. I suspect not a lot of volume going on. Anyway, we'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Dan Celia. I get phone calls every day. Dan, what should I do? What are we going to do as America, as an economy, in the stock markets? What should I buy? What shouldn't I buy? I hear it every single day on every program. You hear it too if you're listening. Look, every single one of them are valid concerns. And I can give a little bit of insight and some ideas of where we might be going. But you and I know, only the Lord knows for sure. But I do know this. We better have something that we can count on for some permanent income. 
you ever notice sometimes there's this sense of urgency in my voice? Look, there is a sense of urgency. How long are they going to be here? I don't know, but I do know this. You better call today about an American Family Association charitable gift annuity. 800-326-4543. 800-326-4543. Extension 206. If we do not get back to true biblical thinking about God, then our situation is utterly without hope. We are not here to please ourselves. We are here to glorify God. The purpose for the Behold Your God conference is to gather with other concerned believers, to confront ourselves with who God is, not the God that we've imagined, but God as he describes himself in Scripture. Dr. John Snyder, author and host of Behold Your God, Rethinking God Biblically. The speakers for the conference are men whose lives and ministries are built upon the conviction that the highest priority of the day is a wholehearted return to the God of the entire Bible. The National Behold Your God Conference, January 21st through the 23rd in Memphis. For information or to register, visit beholdyourgod.org. Hi, this is Dan Celia. Would you go to financialissues.org and just look through the opportunities that we have for you to partner with us? In partnering with Financial Issues, you're going to get some great information. You're going to be part of my email alert system that is going to tell you about buys and sells within the stocks that I am watching very closely. You're going to see the list of that 130-some stocks. You're going to also have access to my buy list and my investment strategies. And by the way, in a short period of time, we're going to have a banking platform that is going to allow you to do your internet banking without any fees, earn as much as 1.5% interest on your checking account through our banking platform. But you've got to be a partner with us in the ministry to have access to all that. Would you consider it? It sure would be a blessing to us. Go to financialissues.org. That's financialissues.org. The opening statement in the Constitution of the United States says this, that we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty. I don't know what part of that we don't get anymore. That was written by men who cared about this country deeply. Financial Issues with Dan Celia. AFR Talk, Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. You're listening to AFR Talk. And all the major indices pretty much, well, they're all negative. The Dow's just turned negative. Uh, no, now it's back positive, but, you know, all pretty much flat. No, nothing, uh, nothing huge happened. And I guess it's primarily due to the uh, downward tick on consumer sentiment. And I don't have a question about the downward tick. I have more question about the upward tick in the three months, four months, uh, the, the previous three or four months. Actually, you got to go back to like August, uh, really. So almost, you know, six months. Um, I think that's that's uh, more the question. But anyway, I'm assuming that's why we're starting to see things uh, bounce in a negative direction right now. So uh, we'll watch that. Uh, it doesn't look like oil uh, is moving much. Uh, pretty much the same. We're still seeing oil at 95.51. Uh, you know, it, it has been hovering around 92.50 to 93.50 for probably five months. So uh, it looks like it is uh, breaking into a little bit of a somewhat of a new normal. We'll see what it ends up with this this week. So that's not good news. That's not going to be good news for uh, the pump prices. The other interesting part, and then we'll go to the phones, the other interesting part in the consumer sentiment uh, being negative is it's Christmas. Think about it. We're just coming off the holiday season. So, uh, you know, generally, um, December, you know, numbers are pretty decent. But anyway. 
All right, let's go to Phyllis. Phyllis calling us from Richmond, Virginia. Hey, Phyllis. Um, hi. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, my husband um, told me that, um, I understand that, if um, he dies before I do, that I can get his Social Security. If overall I have made more in my life than he has, mm-hmm. if I take his, if something happens to him, Mm-hmm. And I take his. When it's time for me to retire, he's a lot older than I am. Mm-hmm. Would I then have to be stuck with what he made as my calculation for retirement, or would the the death benefit thing be one thing, and my choice of um, choosing my earnings over my lifetime for retirement portion mm. be that? Would I get that as an option later when it's time for me to retire? Yeah, when when it's time for you to retire, you will be given the choice of the higher of the two. So I could take his for if that period of time and then choose later to take Yes, one. because he's already taking his, right? Yes, and okay. actually he's taking disability at this point. Okay. So, yeah, when when uh you, you would you would uh, that would continue go go to you since it's already been chosen chosen. When, when it's time for you to stop working and you're going to start to receive Social Security benefits, you're going to get the option, well, you know, they're going to, do you want to collect Social Security benefits under you or do you want to continue the way you're doing now? Uh, and you will have the option of taking the higher of the two. Okay. The higher monthly amount okay. of the two. Also, one other question. I didn't know what head of household meant until you said something earlier on the show. If he has not worked... Before even he took retirement and before he took disability, yes, for years, can I file as head of household? Yes, instead of just and yes. and is that a better filing for me? Um, I yeah, I mean it's 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 better. It's well, let me see, married, um, no kids, no, no, it is not better. It is oh, not better. Okay, it so is I, actually it is actually better. I'm looking at a chart right here. Um, it is actually better for you to fire, file as married, uh, you know, joint joint filing than it is uh, head of household. Oh, OK. Great. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. OK. We'll talk to you. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it. God bless yeah. you. Let me talk to uh, Tom. Tom from Michigan. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Dan. How are you doing? Good. Hey, uh, question for you. Past summer, mm-hmm. uh, I had one partner retire. Another one wants to retire. And at first, I didn't want to buy the company, and then uh, kind of Lord pressed me to buy it. Mm -hmm. And so I drew lots to make sure that's what he wanted me to do. I made Mm -hmm. an offer better than what my accountant said it should be, but I knew that uh, what we had paid for it, we were taking a big loss on equipment or on uh, property. Mm -hmm. And they rejected that offer and wanted a lot more. I was giving them a stock uh, stock, uh, option, and right now we're going to settle for a, uh, well, what's the other kind buyout? Uh, uh, there's a, I mean, it can be a lump sum asset. Okay. The asset. Now we're settling for an asset buyout from a different buyer. Okay. Uh, what I want to know, I guess maybe you can answer the question, but. Uh, was I supposed to go further in debt to buy the company? At what I had offered, I could cover everything. If an emergency came up, I'd still be debt-free. What they wanted more, I would have had to borrow a lot more, and I would be in debt. Yeah. So my, I thought I was following the Lord until uh, that uh, finally they wanted too much for it. Right. Well, 